Hi there. This is a follow-up to the last video, which was uh, the effects that the input filter has on a power supply. Uh, I use uh, microcap in the last simulation. Uh, I use what is called a transient uh, or a switching model. Uh, the model comes with microcap, and it's the one uh, written by Christopher Basso. And in that uh, particular flyback, I have two outputs. I have one at 12, and I have another at 24 volts. Now, uh, on flybacks and most other topologies, you can have multiple uh, supplies. And it takes time, in reality, to build up uh, these models. Uh, you can have a situation where you might not have the switching model uh, available. So how can you simulate uh, uh, the effects of the input filter uh, on the power supply without having a uh, transient or a switching model? Well, I want to introduce a method that it was is actually uh, introduced to me by Dr. Vache Porporian out of uh, Caltech. Uh, this is a method that he uses. It's in, in his book. And what he does is he calculates the negative resistance. And he uses what is what he calls the conversion factor. The conversion factor is basically the output voltage and the input voltage. So in our example, uh, our input voltage is 28 volts. Okay. So we're going to have these conversion factors. We have a 12 over 28 for the 12 volt supply and we have a second conversion factor which is 24 uh, for the 24 volt supply over 28. So once you have those conversion factors oh, and uh, you also need to know what the load is. In this case the load is 24 ohms and it's 24 ohms. Okay. Once you have that information, then what you can do is you can calculate the negative resistance reflected back to the input. So remember, this is a negative, negative resistance, resistance at input. Okay. So when you do the math. Uh, the 12 volt supply actually reflects 130 ohms, and when you do the math on the 24, it reflects a 32.6. So what you do is you put them in parallel, okay? So you should end up with negative 25.86 ohms. So this is what the power supply reflects. Okay, so now the simulation is actually simple. Instead of using all of this, okay, what you do is you put your input filter, which is a copy, and it's basically a copy of this, of uh, what I have here on the switching model. I use it here, and the split, the the model is so simple that uh, all you have to do is just add a resistor. In this case, instead of putting 25.6, you can actually put a negative. So you add a negative 25.6. And then what you do is you put a step response, and then you watch it. And in this case, if you notice here, I have a 1T, meaning that it's a 1 tera ohm, and I have a 1 tera ohm on both. So what I want to do is I want to uh, I want to compare this uh, input voltage at this node versus the input voltage at this node. And they should uh, react the same or similar. So when we run it, this is the output and this is the input. So this is the input or the voltage that we're looking at or interested. Okay. And as you can see, 
the green one is a switching supply and as you see it's oscillating in other words this voltage the V input V input is oscillating and this voltage V output filter which is uh, the simplified VACHA model you can tell that it's oscillating as well okay so that tells you at least that uh, there's some instability okay in the last simulation I use a 8 ohm so I'm gonna go ahead and change that to 8 ohms and I'll change this to 8 ohms as well so hopefully they'll predict that uh, that uh, with the 8 ohms it should stabilize so we run, rerun it again and if you notice it, uh, they're not exact but they're very very close in agreement as you can tell the green one is the switching model okay and it's got one two maybe three rings and the red one is the Vacha model and it's got one two about three rings too now this eight ohms that I use is not the optimal I can go ahead and lower that to four ohms so I'll lower that to four ohms from both Okay, rerun it. And if you can tell, it uh, predicts the stability of the input fil filter. So, this is another way uh, of uh, uh, seeing the effects of the input filter. The advantage of this is you can have multiple, you can have two, four, six, whatever number. All you do is get the conversion factor and calculate the negative resistance, plug it into your filter, run the transient response, and if it's nice and smooth and stable, then you have a very stable uh, input filter. Uh, thank you for watching.